Today I wanted to build a deck around Glissa Sunslayer, one of my favorite cards from the brand new set, and I wanted to lean a little bit more into the competitive side of things and see just how good we can make this deck. And I think we might have just created a monster because we just went 7-0. That's right, everybody. We are talking about Glissa Sunslayer, one of my favorite cards from the new set. It actually, ha actually had it in my top five when I first saw it. But Glissa Sunslayer, man, this thing's a 3-3 first strike death toucher that when it attacks and hits the opponent, you can do one of three things. Very useful things. I'm sure you guys are pretty familiar with this card by now, but I've yet to really try it in a really powerful shell like this. Uh, the reason that I think this is so powerful is because I had the idea of just grabbing really good cards and cramming them into one deck and uh, it worked out really nicely because this deck is basically a mono black deck which has always been very strong at grinding things like sleeper shieldred invoke despair we're used to these things already they do a lot for us um, but we are able to access green now which really gives us an over the top in titan of industry that we didn't have in mono black that can put the game out for good and uh you know like i said we mono black grind our way to the end and smash them with the titan up top it's so much fun. And we threw in a couple little extra things in here too, like Life of Tashiro and Va uh, Vraska that you don't normally see. Tashiro is really great because Mono Red is prevalent everywhere and it can take out a lot of threats early game and keep you going on that life total. But the deck was a lot of fun. Turned out to be a lot more powerful you know, than I thought. We went 7-0 today. Um, I'm pretty reluctant to say things are really good here on the channel when I make a deck, but this one I'm confident in. I think it's very competitive and I hope you guys enjoy it. Before we get into the games though, I just want to say if you're new here, we do post uh, videos five days a week. So if you guys enjoy content just like this, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe. That stuff helps out more than you might know. But let's get into the games, guys. Let's have some fun. Peace out. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we are running Golgari. Golgari mid-range, just a nice clean deck that's not trying to do anything super outrageous or crazy over the top. Just playing basically all the best cards you can play in Golgari. And uh, I believe that this two-color combo is just in a really good spot right now. We've been winning a lot of games with this deck. And uh, I needed to do a bit of grinding because we lost a bit of rank this week. So I'm going to go ahead and just full-on send, man. We're going to full-on send today. Let's go ahead and pump out some damage here. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, we're looking to just grab a bunch of wins today on the ladder, honestly. That's what this build's all about. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pump again. And pump even further. And we'll probably hang on to the Terra Sunder play. Um, they're not going to block, right? Uh, is there a chance we... Yeah, there's a chance we play Terra Sunder here on a uh, Fable the Mirror Breaker, so let's just hang on to it in case they cast that down this turn. Because <clears throat> we're clearly up against Grixis midrange here, and, uh, you know, that's more than likely going to be the play. More than likely. Oh, it's Jace. Okay, I didn't expect that. That did catch me off guard here a little bit. Um, are they going to plus Jace, though? They did have to pay Phyrexian mana for it. That's good. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and pump this up again then. Let them attack through here. Let them attack on in. We are going to get the uh, Life of Tashiro flip here next turn, too, which is great. And then I could just tear Asunder away the, uh, the Jace. Or I could just play Shieldred. I mean, either way, that's a win-win for us, in my opinion. Hmm. Actually, all right, they block with the Blood Tithe Harvester. We figured that was going to be the case. <clears throat> we take out the Harvester. I think that was the best thing we could have done. It could have gotten a little rocky there. If they didn't block, that might have been pretty silly on my part to do what I just did there. Because then I would have just probably not pumped the sleeper. And I probably would have uh, leaned into Terra Sunder there. Which would have been kind of a waste. <clears throat> but uh, worked out pretty nicely. So they exile their own Blood Tithe Harvester here to get a card. And they discard two cards, including a land. So you know they got their fourth land drop here. They wouldn't have given that up, I don't believe. Who knows, though? They plus again. Not exactly what I would have done there if I were them. Uh, Jace is kind of gambling with its life, <clears throat> sticking around this long. 
Um, let's go with Terra Sunder probably here. Let's let's attack in <clears throat> like so and see if they want to answer. Hopefully they block. They don't though. Yeah, I didn't think they would. All right, so let's go with. Man, I want to tear asunder in a way, but it just, I feel like we can do better things here. We saw a Gix command though, which could cause us some issues with the sweeping stuff. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> let's go ahead and just take this out. We're not playing the second sleeper here. Again, Gix command, a bit of a problem for us to have to deal with here, especially if they, you know, kill everything with two and then make me sack the biggest thing. Can't run into that. There's a go for the throat. That's fine. And another blood tithe harvester. Fair enough. Fair enough. And an attack from the opponent for three. We'll take it. Two, four, five. We're pretty close to a Titan of Industry. <clears throat> Not quite there though. Let's uh let's just get a shield in here, I think. Um, I'm, I'm going to leave the sleeper back again, just trying to avoid the biggest amount of casualties as possible for the uh, Gix command. So I'm going to leave back the evolved sleeper until we're ready to get the Titan out. Maybe Titan will be ready to go next turn if I find the land. If I don't find a land, hopefully it's something good enough like an Invoke Despair or a Planeswalker that I can get value out of. So a lot of things we could draw that are just absolutely bonkers. So. What is their turn five play though? Things are going to get a little bit weird here if they, uh, okay. That's not quite enough. And in a braid. Okay. I was going to say there's got to be a two for one here happening. <clears throat> sure enough. There was another red source is good because if you notice, they're just one mana shy um, of a black source to cast and invoke despair. So we know that's not coming down. <clears throat> they eat two damage though. Going down to eight. Gix command that's quite the card here because we could actually turn this into a four four kill this hmm this is tricky is there even a reason to turn this into a four four we don't really need to do we um not really i think i'd get more value out of this <clears throat> i think i'd get more value here All right, now's a good time to play this down. We are, you know, we've got plenty of cards now in hand. We can force the, uh, force the issue, even if they sweep the board here. It's all good. Shieldred back in hand too, which I'm sure scares them. They don't even know we have a second. Obnixilis. Okay. Obnixilis goes for the, the devil play. Huh. <clears throat> and they go immediately for the blood tithe harvester too. Yeah, they're in, they're in a bit of a desperate mode here. They might go for the two three as well. They do. Okay, so they're just trying to avoid taking any damage by any means necessary. This is good. We get a Titan of Industry potentially here, um, or we can hold on to it because right now there's nothing really to blow up with it. Uh, they may just scoop if they see it though. I mean, we could just scare them and just send it in. Uh, I think the Shieldred's the play though. Shieldred, and then we double up on the Evolve Sleeper. Their defense here is actually really annoying. You know what? Yeah, we're going to go Titan. It's a bit of a send it play here, but um, I think it's worth it. We get the shield counter. We get the 4-4. Four, four. I think that's fine. All right, and then next turn, we can try to look to close here. Uh, the opponent does have a cut down, maybe um, a one mana spell that could interact or it's just a blood token. Actually, I didn't even realize that. Um, no attacks. <clears throat> so they can actually sack their blood tithe harvester next turn for six, which isn't enough to kill the industry, which is good. But it is enough to kill the four four token, which is a bit brutal. If they somehow create one more blood token, though, um, that might be a bit of an issue. I'm guessing they don't like their card in hand here because they are highly considering the blood token sack here. Nice. So now our 4-4 is still on the table though for removal. They threw away a fable of the mirror breaker, which 
is a good card, but yeah, I, I get why they did this late in the game. It's not really helpful. And it's a Shieldred. Okay, we're going to go back and forth with Shieldreds each. <clears throat> I do have a Sleeper on the field, though, so once I get my uh, Shieldred in, we're going to be drawing cards with the Evolved Sleeper, hopefully. But they've got a... Uh, They've got a couple tricks up their sleeves still, too. The Obnixilis gains them life. Um, Soren plus here doesn't exactly help me very much, but I don't want to be taking too much damage, so that's a plus. So they may not actually take the card off the top if it's... Uh, yeah, if it's expensive, they're not taking it off the top. They didn't like that. All right, here we go. We know we're playing this. They have no cards in hand, so let's just do this now pre-combat. Let's um, attack into the opponent here. With the Titan of Industry. And uh, do we send everything here? What's the worst thing that can happen, right? If we send this in, they block here, right? That would make all the sense. Then they block here. Here, I think? I don't know. Uh, maybe they block here, but then we give this Death Touch. We know this is blocking here. Yeah. Do we send this through or not? I guess is the question. I think we do. I think we do. I don't know. It's hard to say. I, I, I'm giving him two life gain here essentially for free. Okay, they don't block the way I thought they would. But either way, it's still good. All right. So the opponent loses their 2-3 flyer. We lose our Tashiro. They go down to four. <clears throat> make that six because of the two life gain they deal one damage to the evolved sleeper smart didn't even actually consider that that's actually really good not bad at all um let's get down the evolved sleeper because we know the opponent's probably going to play an invoke despair here because why wouldn't they take that card off the top it's got to be pretty expensive let's see that was good blocking on their part i didn't actually line that up in that way where i'm like i, I wish i would have seen that actually but all right, so it's a land that's good for us but also bad because they get card advantage without taking life and here's the final card in hand we know it's expensive at least yep it's an evoke despair i had a feeling which is why we kept uh that's why we threw out the uh evolved sleeper here uh the opponent's in trouble though i mean they're not gaining any life off of that they're going back to six to where they were and we still have the seven seven mowing through here as well as a shield red Shake down the locals. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. So if we send both attackers through at the time being, they would probably block here, right? And then, ooh, Tashiro's actually super clutch. Tashiro is very clutch here. And we're going to play that out. And we're going to go ahead and give the Trampler even more power. And we send this attack through. The opponent blocks here with the 1-1 one, one on the 4-5, the 4-5 on the 9-9. Nine, nine, so they take 4 damage altogether. Then they take 2 more damage on the card draw that they're going to get off the Shieldred. And that should be game. Alright, I actually did the math that time. So the math checked out. <laughs> here we go. 1 damage goes to my face. End our turn. They draw a card. We win the game. Beautifully done. Let's go. That was a tough game though. Uh, Grixis, Grixis midrange, man. Still doing the thing. It is still doing the thing. It is tough. Tough to beat. But uh, yeah, that might have been our hardest match today with this thing. Nice. All right. That was a grindy first game. But you know what? That we, got, we got the W in the end. And uh, we're on to the next one. So against a really good deck too. Like I said, you know, Grixis is really, really solid right now. Um, mm, Man, opening hand here. Not a lot of... Uh, not a lot of things happening here except for evolved sleepers is that what i want to keep probably not right all right that's not much better but i guess we'll keep it uh we get an evolved sleeper a couple tap lands which is a little bit of a bummer but at least with the sleeper we can play it out and then pump it up at least one time all right we're against soldiers i kind of wish we would have kept that last hand because the uh gix command would have been really really good all right, soldiers is gonna be tough to beat as well. Going second, not ideal. All right, the opponent does attack into us here. Do they have a way to pump this up? What? I don't think they would, right? Yeah, I'll make that trade. 
I'll make that trade all day. Vraska and Titan in hand, man. That's such an expensive one-two combo right there. And we're against a very aggro deck. So let's hope we can get there, man. They must have just top decked that. Yeah, they definitely just top decked that. All right, we keep hitting lands, which I mean is important to get to things like Vraska and the Titan, but it doesn't really help if we don't have things to play along the way. We're just going to get ran over, so. All right, that's going to give 1-1 one -one counters to their soldiers. We do have the Terra Sunder next play, though, so we'll go Terra Sunder and then get into the Vraska a little bit early here. Uh, Vraska, though, I mean, what do we want to do with the Vraska? Because if we minus... And we're already losing two loyalty off of playing it for, you know, five mana instead of the six. It's going to be very susceptible to just get ran over. But I think buying us time is really the key here. So here comes the attack for three. Somehow, some way, we might actually just make it out of this alive. I don't know how, but I feel like it's possible. Let's put a stop here before they go to their attack step because we want to make sure we tear asunder this before they give the 1-1 one -one counters. All right, let's just do this now. And then we'll turn the officer into a treasure. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Any top decks from this point of anything in particular would be playable pretty much with the mana that we have. So I'm happy with anything. Invoke Despair is very solid. All right, we're going to play this out first, though. And we have to take care of the officer right away um i do understand that that means vraska is gonna die here but at least hey that's two damage we're not taking to the face which is great um one two three four five six so we're almost almost ready for a titan very very close but not quite there um invoke despair is great but they're just gonna sack a token so it's not a whole lot of value happening there go to 11. we just gotta hope the opponent doesn't play uh Athalia this turn because making invoke despair more expensive. Well, I guess we'd be able to afford the tax Tashiro is solid, but It's not well, it might actually be what we want to play here Well, no, actually we need to draw a card just to ensure we hit that land drop. Yeah, we can't afford to Miss a land drop here with the Titan coming out next turn Tashiro would have been nice because we could have minus one here and then follow that up with another minus one um, getting a better uh, invoke dis despair possibly down the road, but I can't afford not to play the Titan next turn. If we don't play the Titan next turn, we're we're kind of toast. There it is. All right, perfect. We're in. We're in this game, guys. Holy, I really didn't expect to be d doing this well with the hand we were dealt, but thank goodness they weren't as fast as they could have been. They didn't exactly get the most ideal start either, so. They pumped the whole squad, taking a lot of damage here, going to four. We do have a lot of uh, life gain about to happen with us here in the next couple of turns. We go to nine. These obviously gain us two life each turn. Uh, they take the Brutal Cathar down to get the Titan, which is pretty ballsy, honestly, because we're going to get another Titan now. That's actually really clutch. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to play both Life of Tashiro's back to back here. And we're going to minus one, one, uh, two times on the Brutal Cathar. So we're getting another Titan back, gaining another five life, <clears throat> going to 10. All right. Glad we waited here. All right. Titan is back online and we're going to gain five life again, create another four, four again playing super defensive here and then both uh tashiros are going to go off again another turn here we can take out a couple of one ones all right they're really pumping up the board so they plan on sending this through all right taking six here going down to four gix command i'd say that's pretty clutch so in that case, we don't actually need to even take out their creatures here. We could just use this turn uh, to gain some life because we got a Gix command. And we should win the game here because we get the life link and we destroy each creature with power two or less. Let's give the life link to the Titan of Industry, obviously. And we attack through, getting us right back to almost 20. Just feeling real good. All right. 
Now they're just left with one on Earth, uh, you know, one one, but they get an officer. Good game. Good game. GG's, my friend. GG's. All right. So they're going to take four from this, and we got the attack. So that'll work. That was crazy. That was crazy. We should have probably kept that first hand. Just couldn't. I really can't trust two landers, man. Two landers are just too sketchy, especially with three of all sleepers. I just couldn't do it, but uh, it worked out, man. It worked out. All right. I will, I will say, though, I will say that we got a bit lucky there. I'll be the first to admit it. The opponent didn't exactly come out of the gate swinging on that one, um, which allowed us some time to get set up. Uh, this hand looks decent enough to keep. We do go first. We get the Evolve Sleeper. Get to immediately start pumping it up. It would be nice to hit a green source so we can get the Glissa down. If we can get that down on curve, that'd be pretty awesome. Let's find out what the opponent's playing here, though. Could be mono red. Who knows? These are some gruel sleeves. They got the uh, Vorinclex avatar too, so probably gruel. They're probably true to their color. Just kidding, they're a liar. You absolute liar. All right, we pump the Evolve Sleeper once, go to 2-2, two, two, swing this through. They go to 18, and Glissa is a, uh, available to come down next turn. But being mono black though, Glissa, very susceptible here to some removal. Oh, they're toxic. What? A toxic player, huh? Uh, let's attack here. Yeah, I didn't think they'd block. Let's get down to Glissa. And we got to hope that doesn't get removed off the field. I feel pretty good about it, but I mean, if they're playing, you know, poison, they probably got a drown. A drown's going to take it out with a minus 4-4. Four, four. Or that. Okay. Little exiling effect. That's fine. Ooh, we get an exiling effect of our own here. Do we take advantage of said exiling effect on the 1-1, one, one, or do we or do we just invest more mana into the Evolved Sleeper? That's actually the question of the year right here. Um, we are attacking. I guess we just let it go through. I think we're going to tear asunder this away, because I don't necessarily think tear asunder is going to have a whole lot of targets here if it's mono black. You never know. It could be... Nice. Perfection. Perfection. We answer the uh, enchantment here with an exiling effect. This enchantment would have been able to allow that to come back to the battlefield. And uh, I like either one of these, to be honest. We're going to go here, though, so that way the uh, Vraska doesn't have to pay um, any sort of tax on loyalty. Evolve Sleeper not needing to really be pumped up at all. We're just, you know, playing the cards in hand as we go. And uh, we've had some good answers so far. I'm surprised that they're strictly mono black here with the, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised they're strictly mono black with the toxic. That's kind of crazy. Uh, we had lethal there too. We could have pumped the evolved sleeper up to four, just dealing that damage. Um, Vraska was an option too, but man, that was a good game. Easy win. Yeah. This deck feels like it stomps pretty hard, man. It feels very, very consistent. I've, I don't think I've dropped the game yet with it. So, uh, we were close on the soldiers, but opponent goes first another weird hand here i mean nothing till turn three feels pretty bad but it's some good stuff in hand here uh, we saw how bad that last mulligan we had was so let's just keep it solid start i don't love all the damage we're going to be taking from it but it looks like we got another mono black matchup i'm starting to see the algorithm likes to give us mono black seeing we're golgari it makes sense we got a lot of mono black-esque sort of build as well Glad we found that swamp there, because we do need to be able to get shielded down on curve. All right, they're taking my evolved sleeper, which is a bummer. It's not a fair trade, because we also have one, and we're taking a go for the throat, which doesn't do any damage. And shielded? No, Liliana. Okay. Liliana's definitely this going to minus mine. here, and then they're going to attack in an exile. They definitely have the upper hand going first here. It's been pretty clean game for them so far, being able to just uh, react to everything we're doing. Um, okay. And then they're going to have Invoke Despair, right? <laughs> you you got to play it like they, de like they don't. I mean, it doesn't matter. There's really nothing else we can do here. We can go either Shieldred or Trespasser. Either way, Invoke Despair completely blows us out. So 
Um, let's see. Let us see. I would imagine they would have plussed, um, or they would have uh, played a land and went invoke despair almost immediately. So yeah, it's a pretty clear indicator. They don't, they either don't have the land or they don't have the despair. One of the two is missing here. Looks like the land. All right, we're going to go ahead and drop one Gix command. It's probably the most useless card we have in the deck right now. All right, we will attack into Liliana. I know I could kill the Graveyard Trespasser with like a, a Varaska. Uh, actually, no, we're short on the mana. I, never mind. I'm, I'm thinking out loud right now. And that was really silly what I just said. Okay, let's go with Graveyard Trespasser. Take some of their Graveyard here. And I mean, are they running Gix Command? Probably, but we don't have a... We already don't have a good board for the sweep, so... They're going to have a hard time getting through with the Gix command here. I mean, they could obviously make me sack Shieldred, which would be a bummer, but that's about it. All right. Minus two. Okay, so they, they elect to give the Liliana up. All right, I feel like we've officially taken over the, the game here with the advantage, but um, that Bank Buster can change things pretty quick. I need one more land here to get a good Gix command. There it is. There it is. So with the Gix command, I can have him sack this. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're pretty close to killing them. Not quite there, but this is definitely the way to go. Make them sacrifice. Add some one-one counters. And we swing through. We gain six life, which is a pretty big swing. And they're down to three. All right. Feeling good. And there's one. Oh, they scoop it up. I guess because their bank buster shut down completely too. Like if you really think about that, a lot of the things that they were trying to cast there, I bet, were pretty um, unfortunate for them because if they try to, you know, draw a card here, they, they are at one, they die. If they have invoked despair, I just sack the graveyard trespasser. They draw two more cards, they die. So there wasn't a whole lot there for them. So feels bad, man. Man, this week of decks has actually been a lot of fun. I've I've uh, I've recorded all of them. Um, I'm not sure which order we're gonna release them all in, but man, this one and we have a Marty one this week that have been really really good. Like like actual decks that I'm gonna probably see myself ranking up with quite a bit, which is pretty rare for us. Uh, typically, you know, we've got a lot of really really fun ideas that aren't quite like you know they're like 60% win rates like on a really good you know day, but. Uh, these, you know, this one and my Marty one are just so solid, man. I can see, I can see us grinding pretty hard. Destroy evil onto Shiro. Okay, fair enough. Um, I don't know. I think it's this because I forced them to discard if they want to interact. So. Seems like the right idea. The opponents did... No, they did not. What am I saying? Did they go first? I actually don't remember if they went first. I was talking. Um, let's see. Let's see. We attack into the opponent here. I'm probably going to... Do we want to tear asunder this? I don't think so. I don't think we want to tear asunder this, right? But I'm afraid if I play the shieldred here that um, they're going to exile it. But I think it's the right play. I think it's the right play. It's either that or Terra Sunder away the third path. And I don't think the third path is a good enough target for me to justify that. So, all right. It's a wedding announcement. I'm cool with that. Yeah, they're too far behind. They're way too far behind. And we've got the Invoke Despair just to really kind of blow them out here. So here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to attack first because I would imagine they're going to use the 1-1 one -1 as a um, defensive creature here to block with. And that opens up the third path to... Um, invoke despair so yep they take the bait that means their whole entire board has been erased with the one single invoke despair this card is so broken i can't even i can't even begin to tell you how broken this card is every deck we've made with invoke despair and every deck we play against that has it it's not even fair man it's not even fair gg 
Looking like Glissa's not getting a whole lot of shine in this video, unfortunately. I like Glissa a lot. I think it's such a great card. I think it, uh, I think it needs more time to shine, man. Um, opening hand here is definitely good enough to keep. I'm not upset about this at all. Evolve sleepers kick things off, and it's mono red. Okay, we have a Gix command. I mean, that's definitely a strong argument to uh, our case here. But uh, we are going second, and they did just play a flyer that we can't interact with, so we got a long ways to go before we can. That's frustrating too, because that's another good attacker for the time being. Glissa is a great find there. Um, we obviously are probably pumping this up. Let's just play land in and say go. I will make the block on the Felidon. Or the Feldon, I should say Feldon. Not Felidon. Okay. The attacks come through. I am a little worried because... uh, Okay, they throw down to play with fire. Okay. I wasn't really too worried about that, but I was worried that they were going to maybe pump something up if we blocked, but that's tough. That is tough. We are going to play out the Graveyard Trespasser. It's a source of life gain if we can continue to exile creatures from the graveyard. So we'll take as much life gain as we can possibly get here. Glissa was ready to go too, but I like the idea of, you know, exiling things from the graveyard and gaining life. So they don't swing with Squee. It's, uh... It's the first mono red player I didn't, you know, I've seen that had some sort of uh, hesitation sending Squee in and not swinging away with it immediately. All right, let's go ahead and drop this and Shieldred's another great source of uh, life gain for us. If we attack, obviously we hit that, but we can't touch the Raiju, unfortunately. So let's get down the Shieldred and let's leave back the uh, defenses here. Next turn is going to be a very good one for us. But I do really, really want to try to gain some more life with the lifelink on this, but I don't think we have that luxury, unfortunately. I think what we should... Well, maybe. No, 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 no. Let's just do it. Let's just destroy and sacrifice. We're at 12 life. We don't need to force any more lifelink. We're... I, I was thinking about it, but... Yeah, that's a scoop. That's a hard scoop. There's nothing they can do. Gix Command cleans up the board. Mono Red had no shot. I mean, we were just going to attack with the Graveyard tr uh, Trespasser as well. Taking their Squee, which is their only way to get back into the game. 12 life. Easy choice there. Let's go. All right. One last game for the road. Let's hope we can make this video a 7-0. and um, It's very rare when we can pull these off, so I'm really excited to try this out, man. Let's see if we can get a 7-0 and here. Gosh, I hope so. That'd be great. I, ex I did not expect to be playing seven games, though, uh, the way that first game went. That was like a 15-minute game, but we've been flying since then. Been absolutely flying. All right, going second. You can't ask for a much better start than this, especially if it's aggro. Red source. Blue. Okay. That's going to be frustrating if it's the typical mono blue we're used to seeing. I hope not. Really hope not. Okay, it's Demir. Good. Good, good, good. Um, I think we just... There's clearly no interaction here on board. Oh, there is. Shoot. Maybe I should have attacked first to see if there was a kill spell ready to go before I pumped it, but... Okay, indulgence. That's fine. Yeah, that was a bit of a mistake on my part on the sequencing there. I could have probably attacked first and seen if we can draw out like a kill spell prior to us uh, making that pump. So they're working off the graveyard... So hopefully it's like a reanimator deck. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, we saw some white sources in the yard. So, yep, they are Esper. And Bank Buster comes down. I'm going to blow that up right away. Card advantage. Not happening. And then um, it's nice, too, because we can kind of hang on to Trespasser and then hopefully just, you know, shock them a little bit. We can kind of shock them a little bit because uh, if they are working off the graveyard and trying to reanimate, we'll be able to just sweep up whatever they got. We've got answers to everything in this deck, it feels like. We really do. We've been lucky enough to find those answers too right away. I've, I've been pretty blessed today with uh, making sure we had the right cards at the right spots. But maybe they're not though. Tainted Indulgence does, you know, to me scream out that, hey, we're reanimating stuff, but at the same time, things like Kaito are kind of confusing to me, but. All right.
checking all my options here. Um, I think, I think we just take this out. Honestly, just take it out. It's too good of a card for them to have around, man. Especially if they're trying to make me discard and do those, uh, you know, Urtai type of effects where they bounce it back out and back into the field. That could get a little frustrating. They clearly have some sort of interaction here. What's it going to be, though? Is it a Wandering Emperor? Um. And if they kill this, I'm going to be so sad. This is a bit of a hit. Yeah, okay, good. Whew. I thought maybe they were like super goaded and they were going to wait and just pray and hold on to that wandering emperor for me to invest more, but they didn't have it. Thank goodness. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Hey, we got a good target though for the trespasser. Get that memory deluge out of the yard, uh, but starting to lean towards a much more controlled deck, which does scare me because of things like that. A control deck is not fun to, you know, play against at any point in time. All right, does this resolve? If it doesn't, I can just play another. All right, fair enough. They really didn't like that card, did they? They clearly like the graveyard being filled up because they do run Tainted Indulgence. And this works off of mana values, right? So this is a two mana value, two, three. So we take out the Path to Peril. It's the best, best choice here. So that takes their Tainted Indulgence down to two. Meaning if they have another in hand, they're not going to get much value off of it. Nice. We transform. That's clutch. Um, let's send it in for the attack. Alright, they're down to 10. <sighs> I am pretty scared, I'm not gonna lie, of um counter spells. I mean, what do we what are we more scared of? Are we more scared of counter spells or sweepers? Because if we have put down this evolved sleeper hoping to avoid counter magic um and get more beat down, they could just have another sweeper like Path to Peril. I'm gonna go ahead and try it, man. This could be a problem. Three, six. This might get countered, man. If it gets countered, though, I guess that's one less card in their hand. That gets them down to two. I mean, that's pretty good. Memory Deluge. All right. Could find a make disappear. They don't. They don't find a make disappear. Okay. We're in this game, man. We're in this game. Big time. Big time. Vraska changes the, la uh, the landscape pretty heavy here. Card advantage is going to be king here against this opponent. And they go again. They go again for some memory deluge main phase this time, tapping themselves out, opening the door for some possibilities here. Um, Path to Peril might not be their only sweeper. It could also be, um, you know, farewell. So we're still taking quite the risk if we play out like a Titan of Industry here. If we play out Titan of Industry and give it a shield counter, sure, it gets around things like Path to Peril, which is great, but. If they run the farewell, I'm going to be pretty sad. Here's what I'll do. I'll just play the really, really safe route here. We're going to play the life of Tashiro and life of Tashiro gives, gives the, uh, glutton lethal next turn. Hopefully they don't see it. Hopefully they don't see it. Cause we can pump it up for two, two. Hopefully they're willing to just let it slide for right now. Um, I also have some things in my yard that I could exile for some uh, additional damage. Dang. See, that's tough. That's tough. See, we would have avoided that with the Titan with the shield counter. Uh, but you never know, you know? You just never know. That's tough, man. All right, well, we need to find a Gix command then in order to clean this up. For the time being, though, what do we do? Guess we'll take one of them out. We might as well. All right. It's going to have to be the Titan here. Gosh darn it, man. I wish this would have gone a different way. I, I I probably should have played the Titan last turn. Obviously, hindsight being 20-20, but I'm terrified of that, that farewell, man. All right, well. Vraska's almost ready to be ulted. It is ready to be ulted, but um, they're going to attack it, obviously. But then on top of that, um, I don't want Vraska to ult on 9 because... 
then they go to nine poison counters and then what we don't have any plus um proliferation so we are gonna block like so because it makes no difference and i don't want to lose that titan's uh, shield counter all right this just became a really difficult game man this is a very busted card hard to come back from and it's a path to peril Ooh, okay hold the phone here it's nighttime still seven eight nine ten eleven let's see what we draw Trying to maximize lethal here, potentially. I don't know if it's there or not, but we'll find out. Right now, I see 11 damage. They still have some interaction here. It could be the mirror X, though, right? Okay. Man, what do we do? So I only see 11 damage. If we attack with the Titan of Industry, we get two damage with the Graveyard Trespasser exiling my two cards from the Graveyard. Uh, 7, 8, 9, and then 10, 11 if I play the Shieldred because they're going to draw a card. So because I don't have lethal, I'm going to just slow my roll here a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack with the Titan of Industry. And then I'm going to play out a second Titan of Industry and play out another shield counter onto it. Um, and hopefully that'll be enough. To get the job done next turn hopefully they don't have another sweeper like a uh sun's twilight but i'm sure they do uh let's create the four four and shield counter aggressive as possible here that's the key there's for discovery they really are playing off that graveyard quite a bit i'm wondering what that's all about man man i sometimes Sometimes you really just beat yourself up because you play so scared thinking that, you know, the game's going one way and then... Okay, that's annoying because they have borrowed time. Well, we still put the shield counter here. Try to avoid that sweeper, but borrowed time's just going to come down and exile the Titan if it comes down to it. But yeah, you play scared because you're just trying to avoid, you know, certain things like counter spells, kill spells. You have such limited information in best of one when you never play... <laughs> wow. Yep, they did have farewell. They did, in fact, have farewell. All right. Well, the good news is that they haven't shown a ton of ways to interact at all with uh, uh, Vraska, except for Shieldred's Edict, really. So that's nice. Let's get Shieldred down. Let's draw. All right, let's get down the Glissa. This will turn it back to daytime, which is a bit of a bummer having a Trespasser in hand. I do want it to go back to nighttime if possible. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pass the turn here now, though, and just pray they don't, we, get, we don't get sweep, uh, swept again. But they have three sweepers in the deck. They literally have three sweepers. So I would argue that it's probably coming down. We've seen two Path of Perils, one White Sun's Twilight, one Farewell. Three cards left in the opponent's hand. How many memory delusions have we seen? Two? Yep, it's the White Sun's Twilight. Who knew? Who knew? Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Right, let's get this down first. Okay. That's a card. Where has that been my whole life? Okay. That's really good. Um... Just trying to protect Vraska as much as possible here. Okay, that's about as good as I can get. And... Yeah, we'll say go. Pass the turn over to them. These mites are going to swing through on Vraska for sure. Um, taking Vraska down a little bit. But I have two blockers out in front here. Evolve Sleeper. We're going to pump up a little bit. Borrow time. That's fine. We have a uh, Terra Sunder. And just so happens we have two mana. It just so happens. All right, here we go. 
The opponent, though, is still having some sort of interactions here. I mean, it could be these Mirexes, like I said, though, creating these mites. That's definitely their win con, is these mites, which is a pretty interesting win con. All right, we're going to tear us under this away, and then we're going to hit him for four with this. I think we have this, man. It's just a... It's just a grind fest, man. Holy. I don't know. I, I could be wrong, though. They might have us. It all depends on this next uh, play here. Path to Peril. Okay. Okay. Path to Peril. Do they have a counter for this? Wow, there's a counter. Okay, well, I'm glad they used the counter on that. That's fine. Back to back. And that's how we win, ladies and gentlemen. This is how we win. Vraska's back online. And we're money. Let's go, dude. We take that one down. That felt amazing. That was a tough, gritty battle, man. I love it. GG's. I could have played it, obviously, way different. I am understanding now, obviously, hindsight being 2020, knowing what the opponent was on and stuff like that. But, man... Thought we played that pretty well. I'm happy. And that will do it for today's games, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I do appreciate that so very much. I hope you enjoyed today's video, man. 7-0 with this thing. This thing was an absolute house. I love this deck so much. And I'm going to continue playing this as much as I can to get a bigger sample size and see just how good this thing actually is. Um, I'd love to hear some feedback from you guys as well, what you guys thought of this thing. Um, I just believe, you know, I wanted to try something new, which is just... You know, like I said, cram a lot of really good cards into one single deck and just see what happens. And turns out it's really, really good. We, you know, again, focus heavily on that mono black, which has always been really solid. You splash in green, open up that tiny of industry and you got yourself a, a, uh, apparently a world beater. So this thing is really, really fun. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Um, but thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for making it this far into the video. It helps more than you know when you stick around this long. So thank you for that. Much appreciated. And uh, yeah, that'll conclude today. We'll be back again tomorrow with another one. So be ready for that. And this one comes out on Wednesday. So be sure to check out the live stream tonight. Hit the notification bell if you guys want to be notified when that goes live. And uh, come hang out with us. Um, and lastly, before I hop out of here, huge shout out to the Marty Mob. If you guys don't know, the Marty Mob is the membership program on this channel. So I got to give a huge shout out to them. Uh, they help support the channel. So I got to give them their, you know, much due respect and shout out at the end of every video and let them know. I appreciate them very, very much. So thanks for being a member. I appreciate you guys. And if you guys want to learn about the memberships, it's the join button right down below or there's a link in the description. But thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you again on the next one. Until next time, peace out. Three times like a hat trick. Yeah. The name is Fizzy, no Patrick. Yeah, yeah. If you play him, then it's tragic. Hit him with the mythic, yeah, that's magic. Yeah, Ooh. MTG, that's what you'll see if you like and subscribe. Where's the upload, man? Uh, man, all of the time. Coming with the best decks, but the meta. This ain't cheap.